Hi, so in the previous video we have added investment and looked at what happens when we change certain parameters, in particular productivity, in our model. And now we are thinking about adding government spending to the model. So when we think about government spending, we think of a government budget constraint. A government has certain ways it can spend money and certain ways it can generate revenue to finance the spending of money. So let's take a look at the government budget constraint. So the first side, or the left-hand side, we're going to think about the ways that government can spend money. And the first of those is going to be, whoops, that's a lot thicker than I want that pen. We're going to have government spending just as GT. This is just purchases by the government where the government is purchasing goods. We are also going to have an expenditure, which is VT, which is transfers. So for example, social security payments or welfare payments, we view as transfers instead of the government purchasing things, they're just transferring money to certain individuals in society. And the third type of expenditure we will consider is debt payments or payments for interest on the on debt that the government has. So for example, if the government is running a deficit, they will have to pay off the debt. And this is a form of expenditure that the government has to pay. And so these expenditures are going to be equal to the ways that the government can generate money. The spending has to be equal to the money that the government has available to it. That is what a budget constraint is. We are constrained in our consumption or our expenditure by these factors. So one major way that a government can generate money is through tax revenue, which we denote T. So quite straightforward, that one. The second one is a little more complicated, and it's seniorage, uh, which we will describe by this term, which is basically the change in money supply over the price level. And so this term captures when the government decides to print money. The profits that it can gain from printing money and are captured in this term, and it can finance expenditure just by printing money and using this money to finance things. We won't look at this one in detail in this part of the course, but it's one to take note of that this is a way that governments can and have in the past. For example, in Germany after the World Wars, they tended to print money to pay off their reparations. But we will move on to the next form of finance, which is running a deficit or having debt. And this deficit we have as a change in the level of government debt. And this basically says that the government can finance uh, consumption now by promising to pay off this in the future. So the government gets some kind of debt. So this is our government budget constraint. And however, at the moment, we are going to simplify this for our, for our use. And we're going to say that the government has a balanced budget where we just have government spending, well that should be a lowercase t, is equal to tax revenue generated. So government spending is equal to tax revenue. Now this is a balanced budget because we don't have any deficit. We're not promising to pay off any over expenditure today with future expenditure. So we don't have any terms like this. We don't have a debt term. We don't have to pay interest in the future or in the present, we just have a balanced budget. What we spend today in government spending is equal to our tax revenue today. So that will just about wrap up this video. Make sure to check out the playlist for a future video, which will be adding this government spending to our intertemporal choice model. Subscribe for lots of future videos and do be sure to drop a like rating if this was at all useful.